Good morning, Purple Door. Here it's been three weeks now. This is our third Sunday that we've been apart. And um, we're not done yet by obvious intention by looking out and seeing what all's happening in the world around us. We're trying to stay safe. We're trying to keep everyone safe in the process of doing that. But um, while we've been apart, we have been doing a daily update at 11 a.m. every day on Facebook on the Grove City UMC site. Uh, one of our pastors is doing an update in devotion and prayer each day as we've been calling ourselves to prayer. Um, if you want to see those, you can. Uh, for the latest updates, you can go to our webpage at grovecityumc.org or purpledoorchurch.com and it will give all of the current updates and if there are any changes, they'll be listed on there. You can also see our Sunday worship services in a direct link on that page. We have our church app, the Purple Door Church app that you can get from the App Store. And in that, there's a lot of things. It gives a lot of information and pieces. There's an online giving piece to that. But also at the very bottom, there's something called media and then video, and we're storing all of our 11 o'clock uh, videos are being stored there. You can also go to, on the internet, go to YouTube and then type in Purple Door Productions, and that will bring up all of our um, videos, the music that we're trying to put up on there, and all of the daily uh, devotionals and updates are on there as well. So those are all ways that we can connect with each other. Um, what I would urge is as you're watching this today, if you would um, make sure and and just let us know in the comment section that you're there. We'd love to be able to recognize you. We'd love to be able to connect with you and other people can connect with you as well. As well as if you have a prayer concern that you want to lift up, um, that's a great opportunity that we can uh, respond. And we have been keeping our church prayer list together and we've been trying to pray for it as individuals and as a staff. A couple of announcements of things coming up. Grove City Food Pantry, is um, still trying to get meals out uh, and they're looking for people that can help deliver meals. It's as easy as it can be. Um, you drive up, they load it in your car, they give you an address, you take it to someone's house, you put it on their porch, ring the bell and leave. Um, but there is a sign up and we're gonna try to include that link and it's on our site um, that you can sign up uh, for available times and right now they're um, reaching out into the next week or so. And then also there's been a call for um, a blood drive. We just finished a blood drive yesterday here at the church. Uh, we are still open. Many places have shut theirs down when it comes to the blood drive. They have scheduled a new and Red Cross has scheduled a new blood drive and it's going to be April the 7th. You can go onto the Red Cross site and sign up for that. Uh, two other announcements coming up. This is Holy Week, and obviously Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday services are not going to be happening. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We'll be worshiping together online, but it's also, um, we're going to be doing something very different. Next Sunday is, a, is a, a communion Sunday, and given the situation that we're in, the bishop has given us authority to do an online communion. The term he's using is in extremis. The last time this authority was given was in 1530 during the European Black Plague, um, since we cannot physically be together. And what we're gonna do is, as you're out this week, or if you have it, if you can pick up some grape juice of any kind, that would be fine, and bread. You'll prepare your own elements. I will be doing the uh, blessing of the uh, consecration of the elements over the internet. If you don't have grape juice, then let's just substitute water for that. And we're going to take as a congregation communion together at the beginning of the service next week. Uh, we don't know what Easter is gonna be holding for us. We're still looking at, at the world situation, the local situation and our church situation, and we'll keep you updated on plans for Easter. But we are here today, and we're here to worship. We're here to join together as a family of God. Um, remember us in your prayers, if you're able, in your offerings. 
as we still are trying to make things happen. We're still trying to, all of our staff are busy trying to keep things going, only it's just being done in a very different way right now. So don't forget us. Um, you can mail in your envelopes to the church. You can go online and make an electronic donation. But um, obviously, we still need to be able to keep the, the bills paid at the church as well as we all do. And then um, I just want to open up this time with a word of prayer. Almighty and gracious God, as we gather in this time, bless us. We may not physically be together, but allow us to be in communion with one another in the thanksgiving of the fellowship of believers as we gather in this time, in this place. Allow your word to feed us. Allow your spirit to watch over us. Lord, we appreciate your love in all that we do, and we call upon your presence now and always. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm glad you're here with us in this worship service. We're going to be starting briefly. Pastor Lizzie is going to be sharing our worship scripture today. Pastor Brandy and I are going to be tag teaming the sermon today. We're finishing up in our series of Where the Cross Meets the World. And then um, we'll be closing with a special that Tracy Wershman has put together as a closing and blessing on our service together. So join us as we worship a great and loving God. today and it comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 9 and it says as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you follow the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient all of us live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. 
but because of his great love for us. God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in, in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace, you have been saved through the faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. I'm going to repeat verses 8 and 9, and it says, Porque por gracia sois salvos, por medio de la fe, y esto no de vosotros, pues es don de Dios. No por obras para que nadie se gloríe. Amén. We have been looking these last several weeks on the uh, series around where the cross meets up with the world. And sometimes it fits and sometimes it doesn't fit. And we live in a world that it makes it almost seem tougher and tougher and tougher to get the cross to fit. And yet, is that our job to be making the cross fit? We've been talking about grace a lot over the last, not just this series, but even before. And we've talked about a lot of terms of grace. We've talked about prevenient grace. We've talked about justifying grace. We've talked about sanctifying grace. All God's grace of God's love that extends to each of us, but but in specific and different ways. Prevenient grace is that grace that goes before us, that God is reaching out and loving us when we don't even know it. From our womb, God is reaching out and protecting us and guiding us and loving us. God is opening the doors and the windows that we may know him and love him and and understand him in our lives. And then justifying grace is that grace when we accept what God is offering to us and God reaches down and puts his arms around us and he loves us and accepts us for who we are and forgives us. You know, we've been talking about those pieces, but today we want to talk about how does the cross make a difference? How do we make a difference with the cross in the world today? The last two lines of our scripture this morning came to us from Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. God's grace transforms us in a new creation and sets our hearts on fire. It's almost as if we die to ourselves so that we can live again in Christ. The scripture said we are alive in Christ. There is death to our transgressions. We are made new. Last week we talked about transformations and how God transforms us. And God transforms us in that way. He transforms us and makes us a new creation. Everything that's behind us, everything that's in our past, everything that was in our life before we accepted it, Jesus into our heart is gone. It's gone. We are a new creation. Because of his love, because of his grace, because of who he is, we are a new creation. And because we are a new creation, we are set on fire. God puts a burning fire within us that wants us to go and make disciples. A fire that's within us that, that encourages us and motivates us and wants us to go and do something about what God has done for us. A fire that we need to make sure that we keep aflame. 
that we keep going. There are times in our lives and maybe even in this season where we feel like it's dim or it's not quite as good as we thought it, it once was. But our fire is always there. Our fire is something that we need to keep going. And so because we are a new creation, because God has set us on fire, because God loves us so much, we need to go and make disciples. We need to make disciples in response to what he has done. That's what he calls us to do. Even in this season where it seems like we're being told to slow down and rest, which are super important things that we need to be doing. We need to find rest in him. We need to rejuvenate. We need to make sure we are on the right path. But we have to make disciples. Even in those seasons, even in those times of rest and, and finding our, our comfort in him, we need to be showing other people who he is. We need to be making disciples. We need to be doing what he asks of us. Not because we're checking it off of a list. Not because it's something we, we know we have to do. But it's because of something we do in response to what he has done for us. Because he loves us. Because he has created us and made us new. We should make disciples. We should make disciples in response to the fire that he has set inside of us. You know, we know what we should be doing. We know that we should be making disciples in response to the fire that he has set inside of us. Our mission statement is to make disciples for Jesus Christ in order to transform the world. Ah, but it's a whole lot easier to say those words than it is to do anything about it, isn't it? Now see, I'm a person that I, I like to be able to sketch things out and I like to be able to write it out. I, I'm, I'm a math nerd, let's face it. And so for me to try to to deal with that, I, I, I need something on paper, a, a, a formula, an equation, something that, that makes a difference about salvation and who we are. And if I were to do that, as I sketch it out, salvation is equal to prevenient grace and justifying grace. That's God's part in salvation, where God is coming alongside us before we know it, and then after we accept him, and we understand God's love and grace in our lives. That's God's part, but there has to be our own part as well, our own acceptance and repentance. And so, prevenient grace and justifying grace and our acceptance and repentance should equal salvation. It should be that simple. It makes sense on paper. But if everyone receives God's prevenient and justifying grace equally, God gives his grace to all of us, why doesn't everyone receive salvation? We could say it's because of free will. We all have the choice to reject God if we choose to. But what about the addict or the alcoholic in the homeless shelter? Parents not invested in his life and not aware of church or anything that was going on in that. Lost job, lost his wife and kids. No future, no hope. Is that his free will? Is that his fault? Or a young girl, pregnant, kicked out of her home, scared, alone. Never been to church, never read the Bible, never been around people who had, as she knew. Is that her free will? We know God gives the gift of grace equally to everybody, but it's not being known or opened. So if salvation equals prevenient grace plus justifying grace plus what? There has to be a variable in there that that decides how much of that grace we're aware of to enable our own acceptance of it. We have to be made 
aware of what God's giving to us because sometimes it doesn't happen out of the blue. It's not a lightning strike that hits us. And so there's a variable, there's, a, there, there's something else that we're missing. There needs to be someone to tell the story of the cross to make a difference. And maybe that's it. We are the missing piece. We're the variable in the equation. Let me read for you Romans 10 verses 14 through 15. And in this, Paul's saying, but how can people call for help if they don't know who to trust? And how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard of the one who can be trusted? And how can they hear if nobody tells them? And how is anyone going to tell them unless someone is sent to do it? We may not be able to reach everyone but we all have people in our lives that we can. Back in the 1950s in the Dakotas, I read a story of a time when there would be just miles and miles and hundreds and hundreds of acres of wheat grown and everybody would come together and they would have a threshing party and it may take weeks. And they would all get their threshers and their combines and their, their horse-drawn carts and everything that they could together so that they could all gather up all of the wheat at the same time. And it was a family thing. There were hundreds of men and women and children, and they would come and eat there and, and get everything done so they could all work together and share the proceeds. After about a week of doing that, as they were finishing up for the day, a cry went up that one of the little boys, a little four-year-old, was missing. The kids had been playing hide-and-seek. They didn't find him, and they never noticed. And so they went looking, and they went calling for the little boy, and they went all throughout the wheat and through the woods and everywhere they could find him, and they didn't find him. And the next morning, they were out. They tried to stay out as late as they could that night, but in the morning, they went out and they started again. They went the whole day, and they were about to call it quits and saying, you know, we don't know what's happened. And one of the men said, I'll tell you what, before we finish, the day's shot anyway. Let's just all stretch out at one end of the fields and let's all get at arm length apart and let's walk the field and see if we can't find him. And they did. And as they continued to walk, all of a sudden a cry went up that they'd found him. And they all went running and the little boy had fallen in a crevice and hit his head. And they were pulling out his lifeless body. They were all sick. They took him back to his mom. He said, we're sorry. And her response was, I'm not blaming any of you. I've seen you do your best. But in God's name, why didn't somebody think of that line earlier? 2,000 years ago, Jesus did think of that line. And with his arms outstretched on the cross, he gives us hope. It's where the cross intersects with life today. And we all need to take our place in that line and by our prayers, by our tears, by our time, by our love, by our example, we need to reach out. Somebody loved us enough to tell us about Jesus. Somebody cared enough to pray for us. Somebody was there to teach me at second grade the stories of the Bible so that I knew how Jesus could come alive in my life and I wanted God in my life. That lady's name was B. Holloway. I know her because she's the one that showed me that Jesus was there for me. We may be the missing piece in someone's spiritual life. If we truly want the cross to intersect with the world, we need to do our part. And so how do we do that? So what? 
We want the cross to intersect with the world. And this week, our focus has been leading others to Christ. So in order for the cross to intersect with the world, we have to make disciples. We have to share the message. We have to share a message that is going to change the lives of other people. So what? So how do we do that? How do we change people's lives? We can't hold this great news that we have to ourselves. We can't keep it to ourselves. We have to share it. We have to give that to someone else so that they can know who Christ is and so that their lives can be changed too. So how do we do that? Think about it in your life this way. Who do you know that needs Christ? And I think we ask this question a lot. We say, oh, you know someone. We all know someone that needs to know Christ. But we truly do. We all know someone that needs to know who Christ is. So in this time, right now in this season, when we may have a little extra time on our hands, we need to really process that. We need to process who do we know that doesn't know who he is? Who do we know that we say, oh, sometime we'll tell, about, tell them about Christ? Who do we know that we think in our minds, you know what, maybe someday I should invite them to church. Or maybe someday I should encourage them to learn about God. In this season, in this time, we can teach them who Christ is. We can show them who Christ is in our lives. We can show them how Christ has made us a new person how Christ has transformed us, and how much Christ loves us. And we can do that by spending time with them and reaching out to them. During this series and over the last few months, we've talked a lot about prayer. And just because we're not meeting in person and we're, we're not continuing to use our, our purple door western wall right now, we need to continue to be involved in prayer. We need to continue to reach out to people, and we can need to continue to pray for them. Let's make a commitment and on this journey of prayer to pray for someone, to teach them about Christ, to show them how much they are loved, to show them how much God can transform their lives. So make that commitment this week. Let's pray for someone. Let's pray for someone to know who Christ is. Let's pray for someone to feel Christ in their life. Let's pray for someone to feel that love that they've never felt before. And then let's reach them. Because if we are praying for them, if we were reaching out to them, God is surely going to move in their lives. So let's make that commitment. He will do the work. He will set the, the pace for the situation. He will walk the path for us. We just ask, have to ask him to do that. So what? How do we do it? We think of someone that needs to know who Christ is. We spend time in prayer for that person. And then we reach out. Would you pray with me? God, we're so grateful for who you are. We're so grateful that you have come into our lives, that you have showed us how much you love us, that you have transformed our lives, that you have made us new. You have created us to be the person that you desire us to be. God, help us this week. Help us to have the cross intersect with the world by showing the, your love to other people by bringing other people to know who you are, by reaching out to people and showing them your love. Because God, you're an amazing God. You're a powerful God. You are a good God. And we know that you can reach these people through us. God, we're so grateful for your love for us. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. So this week, as you go, even though things look different, even though we're not in the church building, even though we're not meeting in our groups as we normally would, we can still pray. We can still reach people. So help the cross intersect with this world that we are living in and reach people and show them God's love. We love you. We're praying for you. And we hope you have a wonderful week. Amen.